Investigators traveled to multiple locations, including Melbourne, Adelaide, Kampala, Juba, Cairo, and Nairobi to gather evidence and to interview hundreds of experts and eyewitnesses. They poured through thousands of pages of legal records, corporate filings, financial statements, and other official correspondence. They've tracked suspects on social media and utilized satellite imagery to gather and analyze data about their assets and their movements. The evidence is thorough, it is detailed, and it is irrefutable. It involves arms dealers, international lawyers, international banks, international real estate. And it is because of these international actors that we are also able to provide solutions to help end this criminal behavior to protect innocent civilians. Since 2014, the US has given $1.5 billion in aid to South Sudan. The United States and the world recognizes that South Sudan cannot become a failed state, not simply because of the humanitarian crisis, but also because we have seen the influences that can take hold in a failed state. We can either take action now or we can spend the next decade mopping up the mess. In South Sudan could not continue to loot and kill without the help of international facilitators. Now we're talking about international bankers, businessmen, companies, arms brokers, real estate agents, and lawyers who knowingly or not facilitate these activities. South Sudanese officials partner with big multinational companies, use international banks to move their money and park their assets abroad. We're able to prove without any question that, uh, that not only are they committing these uh, crimes, which they've already been accused of, but that they're profiting off of it. You know, the idea is, and it, what's important to understand about how this works is that whoever has the power, whoever has the, uh, is in power in government has the purse strings and is able to then purchase weapons and use those. So everyone is fighting for power. This is why the money part is important. Um, uh, 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 Mashar now is out. So at one point, Mashar made a deal with a Russian arms dealer who used the name, what was his name? Uh, Magomed Erzunukayev. But what's his name oh, now? Uh, his new name is Mark Goldman. Mark Goldman. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Goldman. You know, nice to meet you. So he made a deal selling the futures of oil to get arms because he's actually selling off something that has yet to happen to try to get arms, to try to get back in power, to have the purse strings to continue uh, to, to be back in power. This is a, a vicious circle that's going on. It, will it work? You know, our hope is that uh, with the help of the government and with the help of the banks, you know, we're not finished with this. There's a lot to be said and, and uh, a lot more further investigation. Stay tuned to come where we're actually talking to the banks. Uh, because the banks have a responsibility. It's very easy to say, well, we didn't know. We didn't know we were doing business with uh, people who were committing war crimes, and we didn't know that we were helping to fund atrocities. Well, we're going to let them know, and then we're going to see what, uh, what their reaction is.